So here we are in part four now of the test review. I knew this was going to be multiple parts, but it's okay. I mean, we got we got to do, right? So here we go for this part here. It's pretty much asking the same kind of things that we were doing in the last video, except instead of a graph, they're giving us a table. And in my opinion, honestly, the table is easier. So for the first one, that means f of 3 plus g of 3. So the x value is 3, and the f value is 7. When x is 3, the g value is negative 4. And so when I combine those, I get positive 3. Now here we have f of 6 minus g of 6. So when x is 6, f is actually 13. When x is 6, g is 5. And so I get 8 here. Now f of negative 3 times g of negative 3. So when x is negative 3, f is actually 0. And when x is negative 3, g is equal to five, 4. And 0 times 4 is 0. Now this one is asking us for f of 0 over g of 0. So when x is 0, f is actually 4. And when x is 0, g is 0. And when you have zero at the bottom, that's when the value is undefined. So we would just select this bottom one here. Number 15 says let f equal 5x minus 1 and h equal negative x plus 5. And they want me to do f of h of 3. So f is on the outside, h is in the middle, and then 3 is on the very inside. So we've got to figure out this first. So what that means is I'm going to plug in 3 into the h function. So I get negative 3 plus 5, which is 2. So this is a 2. And then I need to find f of 2, which means I'm going to be plugging 2 into the f function. So I get 10 minus 1, which is equal to 9. This one is very similar, but pay attention to what letter is on the outside, right? That's the one that's going to be used last. The one that's on the inside is the one that use, gets used first. Another way I've seen some people do that is they go from right to left. They say 5 gets plugged into F first, and if I did that, it would be 2 times 5 minus 1, which is 10 minus 1, which is 9. And then that value 9 gets plugged into H. And so in this case, it would be negative times 9 plus 1, which is negative 9 plus 1, which ends up being a negative 8. Um, at value. So I've seen people do it that way, where they plug it in the first one and then the answer into the last one. And you can do it that way, or you can do it the way we've been doing it, where you figure out this first, and then once you know what that is, you figure out h of 9. Okay? Now, this is um, a same thing, but with tables instead of functions. So we're trying to find f of g of 1, which means f is on the outside, g of 1 is on the inside. So plugging 1 into g, that means I'm going to look for the x value of 1 and pick the g value, and it happens to be 3. Now the x value is 3, and I want to know the f value, which is 4. So those are pretty quick. They're not very lengthy. Um, and if you have to show your work on these problems, I mean, this is what I'm looking for, for you to write out what this means and then to start doing that. Or if you're doing the arrow way, you still show all your steps for where all the numbers are coming from, okay? Um, number 18 says, the given equation and graph, so this is given and this is given, um, find the following. So one, they want us to give them the domain and range. Well, the domain is going to the left forever and to the right forever. So domain is negative infinity to infinity. The range is the bottom here, which is a negative 1, and they go up to positive infinity. There is a point here at negative 1, so it will have a bracket. Then the vertex is this point right here, which happens to be negative 8, comma, negative 1. So that is the vertex. Then it's asking me for the axis of symmetry, whatever the x value is here, x equals that x value. What are the y-intercepts? That you have to figure out by plugging in 0 
since I can't see where it's crossing the y-axis, look here, it's going up, 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 but I don't know what number it's going to touch the y-axis. So to find that number, you just plug in 0 for x, and so I would get 8 squared minus 1, which is 64 minus 1, which is 63. So eventually, when it gets up there to 63, that's where the y-intercept would be. Oh, look at the directions. Type in an ordered pair. So 63 is the y value, and the x was 0 that I plugged in to get that x that y value. The x-intercepts, those are already shown. You've got one here at negative 7, and then you've got one here at negative 9. But notice that it says it wants them in ordered pairs. So you would say negative 7 comma 0 and negative 9 comma 0. Or the reverse. It doesn't matter what order these two are in as long as both ordered pairs are written correctly and they're both present in your answer. So for this one, there really wasn't a whole lot of work to do. So for a problem like this, it may not require work. Although I had to do some work in order to figure out this part. Not that part, this part. So um, I do believe that in the, in the test, the problems like that don't require you to show work because you can pretty much just read the graph and get all the information. So here's another one, right? Um, domain, again, it's going down but to the left forever, and it's going down and to the right forever. So left forever and right forever is indicated with this interval. The range does go down forever, but then how high does it go? It only goes up to this y value, which is 3, and it should have a bracket. The vertex is right here, and it looks like the coordinates are negative 3 and 3. And then the axis of symmetry is whatever the x value is there, so negative 3. The y-intercept, unfortunately, I can't see it. Hopefully you can on the test, so you could just put it in there. But for me, I can't see it, so I do need to actually plug in 0 into my function to figure out what that y-intercept is. So I'm just plugging in 0 for x in this whole function. So I get negative 3, 3 squared plus 3. So parentheses, then exponents, then multiplication, and then addition and subtraction. So we get negative 24, which explains why I can't see it, because it's all the way down here at negative 24. Um, so the intercept is going to be 0 for x and negative 24 for y. Now the x-intercepts are visible. I have one here at negative 2 and I have another here at negative 4. So that's negative 4 comma 0 and negative 2 comma 0. And again, it doesn't matter which order you put the points in as long as the coordinates are correct for each point. So you definitely don't want to swap these because then that's a totally different spot. Those are y-intercepts and not x-intercepts. Okay. So now we have another problem. It says choose the graph that corresponds to this. So again, this is another one of those problems that is not going to require us to show any work because it's just a matter of you noticing what's happening and then being able to select the correct graph. So I obviously can tell that this is a squared function, so it should look like a parabola like that, right? And then I see the minus 7, which means it's going to go to the right 7. And then I see minus 2, which means it's going to go down 2. So it's going to be a parabola that went to the right 7. So it's going to be over here somewhere. And then it's going to go down 2. So it should look like this somewhere over here. And this one doesn't, this one is going in the opposite direction. This one definitely wasn't it. So it's probably something over here. But what it should look like is here's 7, here's 2, and it should be... Originally, it's supposed to be here, but it moved to the right 7 and down 2, which means now it's there. Okay, and so your graph should look like this. Now, um, let's keep going here. So 21, let's see what 21 looks like. We have the graph of the quadratic and... This one actually wants me to graph it. Now, I'm actually going to stop the video here because I'm afraid I'm going to get chopped off. Um, 
I see something pop up with updates on my screen, so I'm gonna try to close that out and stop the video, and hopefully it doesn't wipe out my video. And then we'll continue with the next part with number 21.